What's up, y'all? Travis here, Suicide Drift. We got a package today here from Agile Performance. Here's their stickers right here. Um, a couple business cards. And I believe this is some warranty information. All right, thank you for your purchase. Um, so I already had these uh, inner tie rod spacers. Um, this is an angle kit, by the way. But I got these inner tie rod spacers before, but these are these other bolts come in the kit. All the little hardware you're gonna need. Um, so these are gonna go on the inner part of the tie rod spacers to the rack and pinion. Um, and then these are parts, uh, I believe these are lock washers for this when you put it on. I have to watch the video again, you know, make sure you do the instructions because I do not want to mess this up. And then here's the actual angle kit itself from them. <clears throat> so it's a pretty cool design. All they do is this bolts onto your steering knuckle. Um, so instead of your rack and pin, instead of your tie rod mount being this, uh, where the ball joint goes to, it's this heim joint instead, or this spherical ball joint, it looks like, is it? pretty sure it is um but again it just bolts to your steering knuckle so you're changing your um what is that your steering arm angle so then this is how you're gonna get to a little bit different angle but this kit should be good for about 50 degrees um it says 50 degrees with just those but i don't know how much it is with the tie rod spacers so that's what we're gonna be doing today uh, I haven't seen anyone do an install for a Mark III Supra in the uh, in the United States. Uh, they do have one in New Zealand uh, where Agile is based out of. But might as well be the first ones to do it in the Bay, in the California. You feel me? Uh, but yeah, I'm going to get to it now because it's supposed to start raining. So I think it's supposed to start raining soon. Yeah. 12 and it's 11:50, so we'll see we'll see you guys see these clouds it's for sure gonna rain on me so i gotta hurry up on this uh but there is a couple things that you have to do um, i already took the wheels the rotors the calipers off because that's easy work uh there is a, an inch section i have to cut out uh there is a 12 mil bolt behind here on the dust shield that goes on where oh let me there's this hole let me see let me get a good angle with the gopro so you see this these threads right here uh that hole right there let me see if i can point out this one right here so that has a 12 mil bolt over here on this side right behind this wheat right behind the, sorry right behind this ring right behind the shield so you got to take that out because that is where this uh whole kit is going to be bolting up to so after I take that out, I'm gonna take this tie rod end off and then start to take apart um, it from the rack and pinion. Finally got the bolt out, as you guys can see. Um, this is a section that you guys are gonna have to cut and then bend back. Uh, you do have to bend it back though, because if you don't, then it is gonna rub on the inside of the rotor. Uh, but here's a 12 millimeter bolt. Uh, like, what, an inch long? Um, one thing they didn't tell me, um, if your Supra has ABS, you're gonna have to bend the ABS ring a little bit to get this out because even though I bent that relatively flat, um, I still wasn't able to pull the, uh, the bolt out. I don't have ABS anymore. I'm not really worried about bending this ring. If you are, make sure that you bend this back properly. Otherwise, you are gonna have an ABS fall. Um, but all I have to do now is just bend this back. And then I believe there's a little portion of this uh, that I have to clearance back but i'll get the uh agile kit and then test it up a good way to check if you bent it back properly is that you can put the bolts onto here um i don't have them on me they're over there in the in the garage but as long as you hold it right onto the hub and you spin it around you shouldn't hear any metal rubbing if you do then uh you guys are gonna have to bend that back more but let me show you the part where it kind of rubs on so it would rub right here on this inner ring right here. So that's why you have to bend that back. But now, time to test fit that part. I don't know if I ever showed you guys this trick to take out tie rod ends, um, but if you can see, I got the acorn nut or the crown nut just barely over the tip of the tie rod end. Um, so imagine that the crown nut's just right here at the tip of it, just a little bit over it, just like how this is right here. And then you want to get a hammer and you can smack right here on the side of it. Is 
sometimes they pop out if they don't i just smack like once or twice pretty good on the top of it just to make sure that i don't mushroom this part of the castle nut you have to be careful with this because you will cat you will damage a castle nut well as i thought this motherfucker wasn't gonna move so you can use this um i forgot this, what this is called exactly but it, i'm pretty sure it's a ball joint remover um but you kind of just fork it and wedge it in between there and then as you hammered it forward um it's just putting more of this inside in between here just to pop that out i might have to hit it better and you hear that right there at the end and now you can see this ball joint is fully popped out so pull that back take my ratchet pull this little sucker off the end if it wants to fucking spin off easy enough so after you take the ball joint or the tie rod end off uh there is this 14 millimeter right here Let's see if they'll focus this one right here um you just pop that off or just loosen it up a bit and then once it's loose, then you could spin it off by hand. Um, you might have to hold this side, uh, which it is, looks like I have to do. Uh, what up? So, pretty sure this is a 14? 14 or a 13. So this, oh yep, uh, inner, inner tie rod's a 14 millimeter. You just hold that. And then you should be able to, oh, it might not have loosened this enough. Oh, it looks like I have. So I actually decided that I'm not going to be pulling off the inner tie rod end and then putting the, um, where'd it go? That little tie rod end spacer. It's here somewhere, but um, I am not going to be removing the inner tie rod. I am getting a new rack and pinion because this rack and pinion is leaking fluid, um, but I did want to test these out. Uh, before that, um, just to eliminate any issues with installing this and making sure this works properly um and then you know if i put this on the new rack and pinion and it feels all choppy i don't want to condemn these uh when it's actually the rack and pinion that i'm getting so with this known good rack and pinion i'm just going to be now slipping on uh this section screws onto there um this hole right here is where that 12 millimeter bolt was and that is going to bolt up over there uh, this bolts to where the tie rod usually bolts to on the steering knuckle, uh, while this is going to be your new steering arm point. So I'm going to start putting it all together, uh, hopefully, hopefully give you guys a better picture of how it's going to all look. Don't forget to put thread locker onto your bolt. So you're going to put some on that one. It uh, looks like this one's already torqued and the cotter pin's already put on, so that should be fine. And then you do want to put some on this bolt right here, but that's kind of how it looks. Um, it's just replacing this outer tie rod at this point. But this kit looks pretty sick. Got it all bolted up. Um, these are size specific. Mine didn't come labeled, so I tried to put the left-hand side one onto my right-hand side one, onto the right-hand side, but it didn't bolt up. Um, there is a little bit different of a cut to it, and I'll try to show you guys more of that. Um, after I get this back together. So I still got to torque it down, uh, but I have this tie rod end bolt, uh, where it used to bolt, all bolted up. I have that bolted onto the knuckle now. Uh, I still have to tighten all these down. Uh, I do have to do like a slight alignment on it here at home. Um, it's not going to be perfect, um, but I have to do it until I can uh, get it aligned or go to school and do it aligned, you know, something like that. Uh, maybe at the shop near our shop. Uh, but this kit's pretty good. Um, again, it comes with this new inner, outer tie rod section that bolts to this part of this knuckle, uh, this knuckle, knuckle bracket. And then this bolts to where the OEM tie rod is and then onto the knuckle. But not too bad. Not too bad of a setup. You just gotta torque it down and then remember to put your cotter pins in and then also remember that you guys put the Loctite onto there. I forgot to mention one thing. This is the part that I was telling you that I had a clearance. Uh, so, uh, if you look right here there's some cooling fins um this originally was like right here to pull air in uh so i took that off and then i also had to bang in a little bit of the uh dust shield itself uh didn't it's not touching the rotor at all oh yeah it is <laughs> but uh just gotta bend it back a little bit so the last thing to show you guys for this side um depending on your wheel and your offset setup 
Uh, they said 18 by 8 plus 0, or you know, whatever, eight, something by 8 plus 0 is the best offset that you can have for the front end. Um, this is 18 by 10 plus 38, but then I have a 38 mil spacer, so it's 18 by 10 plus 0. But if you look, you see where the, the gap from the, you see that little white section where that gap from the wheel and the lower control arm is? So if I go all the way to lock, I'm already rubbing on it. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but um, in this case, what I could do is that I found a bolt. Um, this is usually where the bump stop usually goes, uh, right here. So there's usually a bolt there. I took it out a while ago, um, but what happens is that this bolt itself touches against this little part of the lower control arm. This is the bump stop. And then you can just screw this in all the way. Uh, which is what I'm gonna have to do just get it all the way down there and try to just get as much usable angle as I can but here before I tighten that down I'll just show you guys so now when I'm at full lock and this is me holding it at full lock there is a little bit of a gap over there and the wheel is not rubbing so that's the last last resort that you could do to reduce the amount of angle that you are going to be getting out of this kit just so just for real clearance if i had a smaller wheel then i could have more angle but you know style points because uh, well the wheel is a little crooked but you guys get the point style 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 i have both sides done as you can see this one there's a little bit of toe out and then this one also there's a bit of toe out here too i don't have any toe plates uh but i'm gonna be making my own Gonna make sure these are lined up, put a couple screws in between to make sure these are held together and they're even. Gonna cut this right here to make these even. And then I'll probably use a sawzall um, and then just slit it in a bit. Just enough where uh, what you wanna do is you want to be able to put this on the floor, have it on both sides of the wheel, kind of like how that is. And then you wanna put a tape measure on both sides so then you can get a reading for that. That's why I'm gonna make these even. Um, yeah, and it's fucking raining, so I kinda don't wanna be out there and get all sick and shit. So I'll make this um, and then come back outside once it, stop, once it stops raining a lot. So here is the whole setup. Uh, like I said, put the three screws to put them together and hold them together. Then I just cut the one side off and then you can see right through there. This one's a little messed up, but I'm gonna be using this bottom side cause that's the even side. And then this right here, you can see right through it. And that's where the other side of the measuring tape is going to be going to. It is by putting it up against here. And then you'll put the end of both measuring tapes onto one side. And on the other side, you'll get your reading. Um, depending on your different measurements, uh, if they're zero, that means they're literally zero. There's no toe in or out. Uh, if the measurements are exactly the same, you just want to measure the difference. If there's a bigger difference over here in the front, uh, let's say that's five feet and five inches and this is five feet and seven inches then you have toe out because the front of the wheel is facing more out than the back of the wheel so toe out let's say this is the right side of the car this is toe out that's toe in for the left side this is toe out that's toe in it's easy to look at from the front if you can see more of the front tire or the front part of the rim than the back of the rim that's how you know you have toe out but let's say if this was like this that would be considered toe in super is officially all done well kind of i still have to get it aligned but i did use those toe plates worked pretty good uh drove it to an appointment last night worked fine uh drove it to work and then back home fine again it has a lot of angle i'd say about 50 degrees or so but one thing you do have to be mindful of when you're doing your alignment is that you have your steering wheel completely straight uh make sure that it's level there's enough play left and right the toe with your steering wheel not straight what can end up happening is that now when you're going straight down the road your steering wheel is going to be cocked to the side a little bit so i was mindful of that it does drive straight there is a little bit of toe in i don't know if you guys can tell but slight amount of toe in not too bad uh nothing crazy still drivable but again shout out to agile performance i was gonna wrap it for this video Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And don't worry, we're gonna be doing some shit with this. We're they're both gonna be painted and everything, but all in time, all in due time. Peace, y'all.